Prince William pulled out of attending a memorial service for the late King Constantine of Greece at the last minute this morning for unspecified personal reasons. Queen Camilla was instead the most senior member of the royal family in attendance, with King Charles absent, obviously, because of his cancer treatment, which continues. Prince Andrew could also be seen enjoying a prominent role as he led fellow royals on foot to the service at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. No further detail was given on the Prince of Wales' absence, and it's not known if it relates to his wife Kate's recovery after her abdominal surgery last month, although the palace has confirmed she's still doing well at home. Joining me in the studio now, Talk TV's Royal Editor Sarah Houston, good to see you. And we're also joined by Royal Commentator Afia Hagen. Nice to have you both here. Let's start with you, Sarah. So this is a very last minute thing, and we know this because um, Prince William's name is in the order of service at the late King Constantine's funeral. Yes, this was his godfather's memorial service taking place in St George's Chapel. Uh, at Windsor and uh, William was due to be giving a reading and so his name had been printed in the order of service. We discovered about an hour before the service was due to take place that he wouldn't be uh, attending. We understand that he had run, he had telephoned the Greek royal family this morning in order to explain his absence and apologise uh, for that. But obviously, given the backdrop to this, the king uh, being away from public duties because of his cancer treatment and William's uh, wife recovering at home after abdominal surgery, there's a huge amount of scrutiny mm. on every movement uh, that they make. Now, we had a little bit of reassuring news from Kensington Palace that the Princess of Wales is continuing uh, to be doing well because I think everyone's first reaction is, gosh, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Is Kate unwell again. Yes. Um, but we are told that she's continuing to do well. That suggests to me it wasn't necessarily to do with uh, this, um, but personal matters and not wanting to elaborate <coughs> any further on that. Absolutely. I fear, of mm. course, there's massive speculation, not something that we want to go in for on Talk TV because it's very disrespectful and also pretty pointless to mm. start wondering about what could be wrong with someone and how long it's going to take for them to recover. However, yeah. it's impossible to stop a rumour mill starting and a kind of cavalcade of opinions mm. cascading all around the world. So I would imagine that Prince William, really the very last thing he would have wanted to do is to pull out at the last minute of this. Absolutely, you're definitely right about that, that it had to be something pretty significant for him not to turn up, especially against this backdrop, like you've alluded to, Sarah, of uh, King Charles and his cancer diagnosis. And of course, uh, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, also unavailable, recovering from abdominal surgery. He knows that by him not being there, not being there at pretty much the very last minute, is going to throw up a lot of questions. And you know, a lot of people have been saying, despite the fact that Kensington Palace have said that Kate continues to recover well at home, mm. a lot of people are like, well, maybe it still is to do with Kate. And a lot of people saying that we haven't seen any pictures of her. We haven't had any statement from her. She's recovering from an illness. She doesn't necessarily have to do that. She doesn't have to do that. Nobody does. Mm. But it doesn't help that rumour mill that is already in motion. Absolutely. Let's, let's just set the scene, Sarah, on this. The Greek royal family and the British royal family, obviously, related mm. but with a very particularly intimate relationship because Prince Philip was Prince Philip of Greece so it's it's yes. it's, a, it's an actual uh, loving affectionate real relationship not just a formal royal relationship yes so uh, King Constantine of Greece was Prince Philip's first cousin once removed also his sailing partner uh, the second cousin of uh, King Charles and a very close friend, uh, a close uh, friend subsequently chosen to be Prince William's godfather, uh, known as King Con uh, to friends and Tino uh, to the royal family. Uh, and so um, this memorial service saw a huge turnout of members of the royal family, a who's who of European royals. And, and, and then because we didn't have William there leading the royal family uh, into church. We had this remarkable scene of Prince Andrew I know. leading now, this is, the pack. This is obviously the thing that is going to draw a great deal of attention. Mm. Suddenly, Prince Andrew, who's been kind of consigned to the nether regions of life and mm. the, the no regions at all, the no-go regions of royal life, suddenly there in the absolute front. And even more surprising, I think, to anybody who's been divorced in their entire lives, which is almost all of us, um, to see Fergie there at the yeah. very front. What's all that about? Well, this is a 
This was classed as a family event rather than an official event uh, for the royal family. So uh, the Duke of York invited by the Greek royal family as a member of the British royal family, and that's why he was there. Mm. But you see him right at the front with Sarah Ferguson, his uh, former wife, as you say, and following on behind him, we have Princess Anne and Zara and Mike Tyndall and uh, other members of the royal family as well. But to see him there, in that very front position and apparently in church, greeting everybody and almost playing the host. Queen Camilla, of course, the most senior member of the royal family to be attending, but she was driven yes. uh, from the castle to uh, St George's Chapel. So we didn't see her uh, walking down with others, but it is quite exceptional. I suppose it's a little bit like those scenes we see at Sandringham on Christmas Day and Andrew very much still in the thick of it then. A little bit, and it, but, it, but it's kind of, um, you know when we saw the picture of the members of the royal family, the working members of the royal mm. family of here. Mm. And, and it was impossible not, and nobody wants to be ageist, least of all me at the advanced age I find you, which although I look so fun, so much younger than yeah. I'm absolute walking miracle, obviously. But 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 um you know the the, the feeling people have was my gosh, mm. these are these are people who are getting on in years, mm. most of them, with the exception of of, of William and Kate, mm -hmm. my goodness me, you know, getting on a little bit. Yeah. And then suddenly you see Andrew and Fergie at the front and you start thinking, ooh might they suddenly start filling in? Is there going to be a sort of... Because there they are, filling in, mm. aren't they? I think this is an exception because it's a personal family event and one that we are seeing and one where we're seeing the pictures of mm. and is being broadcast, but this is classed as a personal family event, not one for working royals. Mm. We're absolutely right in saying of the nine working royals, only two of them are under the age of 50, and that is the Prince and Princess of Wales. Mm. So I don't think we will see... Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson taking up those roles? Absolutely not. But we definitely will see more of them at events like this. But it's extraordinary on a day like today, even though this is a personal family event, mm. in the absence of Prince William, you have Prince Andrew leading the pack. And, you know, a lot of people saying perhaps Prince William didn't want to be pictured with Prince Andrew. Could that be the reason? No, I don't think so. Do you? I, no, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's pretty significant for them to make a decision to pull out of something mm. as important as this, his godfather's memorial minute. service, where he's due to be giving a reading and at the last minute. And they will have been only too aware that, of course, mm. the minute you make an announcement that William is pulling out, because this wasn't a long journey for him, just up the road from Adelaide Cottage mm. to Windsor Castle. Um, if, if you do make that announcement, it, you know it's going to raise more questions than it answers. Yeah. It certainly is. And so we uh, let, let's talk just a little bit about, you know, one of the most remarkable facets of this. I know we discussed it before, but you can't really not. Is the relationship between Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, mm. his ex-wife now for many, many years, just rocking up together at this family function as if they're forever a couple. The happiest divorce couple I know, as she <laughs> described uh, them as. I mean, they do coexist uh, as if they are uh, still married, still live together at Royal Lodge on the Windsor estate. Uh, since the death of particularly the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, she has seen herself invited to those uh, family occasions like uh, Balmoral for the summer uh, and also Sandringham at Christmas, the last two Christmases. She's been a part of those for that family gathering mm -hmm. at Sandringham. I, I think it's really good to see her out and looking really well because, of course, she's had a torrid Absolutely. time of late she's with so breast nice. cancer and then the skin cancer mm -hmm. uh, diagnosis. So there's an awful lot going on uh, for them. But a proper family showing has uh, Princess Beatrice, Princess Eugenie uh, there. So the full York family. Mm -hmm out in and, and 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 the the Greek world family always kind of glamorous and 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 also quite mystifyingly treated by our royal family as if they were still on the throne of Greece even though they were actually living in Hampstead Garden suburb <laughs> so so that was that was a bit confusing I think you it was like King, King Constantine of Greece yeah. said um that he was always going to maintain the title king because he was the last uh, king and he said well presidents in the United States for example don't become ex-president mm -hmm. uh he Still, although he wasn't the monarch on the throne, he was still king and maintained that title. Yes, and 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 uh, and also very you know glamorous family. Yes, the Greek royal family having led a 
very highly glamorous life in this country, haven't they, mostly? Yes, very much. And I think Marie Chantal of Greece had her own fashion label as well, didn't she? Well, she was one of the beautiful mm -hmm. Miller sisters, yes. wasn't yeah. she? Daughter yes. of Robert Miller, yeah. who owned every uh, duty-free shop in every terminal in every airport in the entire world. Marvellous. Yeah, marvellous. good knowledge there, <laughs> Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was a big fan of the Miller sisters. I thought they were fabulous. Um, so, 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 Afia, we, we do have um, a royal family at the moment depleted by illness. Yep. Depleted by choice in Harry's case, <laughs> depleted in Andrew's case by whatever it is deemed that hangs over him as a sort of Damocles, mm -hmm. um, and, and then under greater scrutiny, really, than ever before, minute scrutiny. Yeah. Absolutely. They are under incredible scrutiny and incredible pressure at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right in saying that we <laughs> really have depleted staff, like you mm -hmm. can't get the staff at the moment. Skeleton staff is literally it. You have uh, Queen Camilla, who is taking up pretty much all the royal engagements, <laughs> uh, Princess and the Princess Royal, the hardest working royal, working even harder, as it were. And Prince William had actually just got back to work. You know, uh, last week he had those those engagements to do with um, Israel and Gaza and making that statement. It seemed like he was getting back into the swing of things. Well, he went to the Baptist at the last minute. So that was a last minute. Quite one, a lot yeah. of last minute things. Which yes. is very, very unroyal. Isn't uh, very it? unroyal. Really? These things are planned a long way in advance. And he did apologise that it was a fairly long last minute decision to attend. So I think you can see they're playing things a little bit by ear yes, it does with Kensington like Palace. And obviously on this occasion, a very formal occasion like the memorial service, his name was already in the order of service. Yeah. And so they'd had to confirm it and therefore they had to put out this retraction, which is perhaps why we don't get a lot of advance notice mm -hmm. about his engagements because they don't want to have to keep doing that. Do we get the impression that the feeling within the royal family, and I'll extend that to the Greek royal family and the other royal families attending the funeral or other commemorations. Sp members of the Spanish royal yes. family, they're the Danes. Yeah. Do, we, do we get the impression that the feeling towards Prince Andrew is warm and cordial, that he's not sort of shunned or, or in any way sort of condemned among his own family? Or do we get the sense that, you know, his family feels that, that, they, that he has very badly let them down? I suppose several of these uh, families will be no strangers to controversy and, and family drama, will they? Um, and I, I guess they take the lead from the British royal family as well, that he hasn't been, he's not an outcast in terms of the family. Yes, he's not there in public life. He's not representing the royal family on the public stage, mm -hmm. but he is still a member of the family. And so when you have occasions like this, which are deemed family occasions, OK, the cameras are there, um, but uh, he is still very much a part of it. Are you at all surprised, Afia, at the way in which he seems very comfortably and very confidently, and some people would say maybe in a way that feels exceptionally entitled mm. to kind of occupy the centre stage as he leads the family in? Because, you know, some, some people in some families, if they have fallen from grace in the almighty way that he seems to have done, mm. would be skulking away on the sidelines. He's not doing much skulking, is he? No, absolutely not. I think I was a little bit surprised at first, but, you know, on these small family occasions, you know, we've seen him at Garter Day, we've seen him on, on these other occasions where he is front and centre. So I think he has a certain amount of comfortability now that he knows that, if it's a family occasion, like Sandringham, Garter Day, something like this, that he is accepted within the fold, that he can be front and centre. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, he is very comfortable himself, confident within the family. And I think there is definitely a sense within the family that he still remains Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, despite whatever else is going on in the background. But he definitely, to me, seems like he's enjoying it. Yeah. Well, he doesn't get out much, does he? No. Well, okay, so yeah. I suppose these are kind of uh, uh, highlights of his But uh, we know that he's calendar. not necessarily big on kind of emotional intelligence, is he? Because we know that after the cataclysmically appalling interview with Emily Maitlis, he thought it was such a roaring success. Took he her on a tour of the palace. Took her on a tour of the palace. He just said, because he was enjoying it so much. No. So, I, so I just wonder whether he doesn't quite realise how we might be and the rest of the country and the world might be observing him and maybe thinking. And, and he has always maintained that he has nothing mm. to answer for. And yet we had that settlement uh, that was made. And because he settled uh, out of court, there has been no... Uh, 
formal court procedure in which he could formally clear his name, mm -hmm. uh, if that's what he thinks that he should have been able uh, to do. And, and he has always maintained that he should have been able to make a comeback. And, and, you know, to us, that's just incomprehensible to imagine that after the allegations that were made uh, about him, uh, that he should be able to be representing the royal family. And I think there's a pretty tough line been taken within the royal family that, you know, you're not, you're not going to be there in public life anymore. Those, that, that ship has sailed. And just finally, it was said of Camilla, Queen Camilla, when she first, I suppose, married, married Prince Charles, I mean, many things were said before they got married, but even after they got married, that one of the things that wasn't the hallmark of her, of her demeanour and her personality was hard work, that she was said to not, not like working hard very much. And even the L word lazy was applied to her by a few people at the beginning. But boy, is she stepping up, Sarah. She's there, she's, she's holding the fort, she's showing up for everything. Thing. She's pressing the flesh all over the place. At the time in her life, and the same for the king, where most people would be thinking about slowing down, you know, yeah. they're pensioners. Mm. Uh, and, um, and now she finds herself, you know, uh, in this position which she could never, never have imagined. And when you hear her sister, uh, mm. Annabelle Elliot, talking about that, you know, she would never have envisaged this scenario <laughs> where, you know, she did get to marry her prince. Yeah. Then she finds herself uh, not just as, you know, the queen consort, consort, but queen. She's Queen yeah. Camilla. And now to find herself there as the, the representative of the royal family. But I think she has got certain causes as well that she is extremely passionate Mm. Uh, about and does work very hard on their behalf. I feel we've got to take our hats off to her, haven't we? If we were wearing them. I mean, she certainly carried the can for the royal family <laughs> over the past few weeks. I mean, in the week up to the, the King's cancer diagnosis, she did five, five engagements, five days in a row. Oh. And whatever you may think about it, she has definitely worked hard. It is the ultimate comeback story, a, definitely a PR turnaround. And she is literally carrying the can for the royal Absolutely family and has been over the past few weeks. The whole thing's amazing and, and, uh, and, and thank you both very much indeed. I know